I tell somebody the word is about to be preached. The lost is about to be reached. The hurting will be helped. God's promises will be kept. The enemy will be demoralized. God will be glorified. I will be edified. I believe it. I receive it. I stand on it. And I live by it. When I hear the word, I will apply it. And I'll be transformed by it. Amen. As you rise, if you don't want to do, thank God for the fragrance of my life and my beautiful, lovely wife back there in the back. You probably, she probably gave me a hug. Right. Mark 8 1 it says in those days then again a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat they brought some stuff but they were there for a while had nothing to eat and he called his disciples to him and said to them he said I have compassion on the crowd I thank God for Jesus Hallelujah. have compassion on people yes. uh, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat and if I send them away hungry, look at what he says, to their homes, they will faint on the way. On the way I was reading, I was listening to this, I listened to the word every morning, and I listened to this scripture, and it stuck out and said they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from afar. Yeah, yeah. So if I send them away yeah. in the condition in which they're in, right. though they had a good time, we're going to preach this already, right. though they heard the word and they had a good time, with me, if I send them away the way that they are, they're going to faint on the way. So I want to tell you, there is no need to faint on the way. We all know what happened, Nick. Did he fed them? Amen. There's no need to faint on the way. Let us pray. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Jesus. If I send them away in the condition in which they are, they're not going to make it. They're going to faint on the way. So the question is, why do we come to Jesus? I didn't want to ask why we come to church. Because I hope you know that we do come to church to have a gathering of people of God who come together. And they come together for the corporate praise, worship, and knowledge of Christ. But why do we come to Jesus? Why are they coming to Jesus? We come to Jesus for many reasons. We come, one, because we were convicted. Who was all convicted before? I mean, real talk, you know, you, you were in your scene and your mess, and you were like, hey, and this is not what I should be doing. Uh, this is not my life. And so, therefore, you realize that if I go to people, they're going to judge me. If I go to other people, they're going to condemn me. So, so I come to Jesus because I was convicted, right? And, and, and I come to God. And, and we also come to him because we need healing. Yes, amen. Uh, the people came because they needed healing on, on in their bodies, but also we need healing in our minds, don't we? I was talking to my wife about something. I said, you know, someone had been through a lot in their lives, and I was telling her, I said, you know, that people, when they've gone through a lot, they don't always act the same. They're not always going to be like us because, you know, I, I, I had a childhood where my parents were very protective, and, you know, I may have thought that dad, you know, would be a little too much, a lot of too much, but I haven't still. I didn't feel like I was abused, you know. I, you know, he, he protected me from a lot of stuff. And my mom and my dad gave me love. And, and then I had things. I didn't worry about where meals come from. I didn't worry about somebody touching on me. I'm just going to be real. I didn't worry about those things. And, but what you realize is, is that, 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 that people don't all have the same story. And there are things that happen in their lives that they got to heal from. And, and, and you may be sitting beside somebody that, that is still in the process of healing from something that was not their fault. Yes. The Bible said that they brought the lame child. And so Jesus said, who did sin? Was it his mama? Was it his dad? And, and he said, nobody sinned. But, but sometimes there are things that happen to people that, that mess them up. And so it's not always the disease that hits your body. in your spirit that you need healing from. When we come to him because we need rest. Yes. Amen. Yeah. You know, you know, because you, you, can, you can be here and not working, but still not resting. Yes. That you're not sleeping Amen. well, that, that, that you're worried, that, that, that you're stressed out. And, and he said, come to me, all you are labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
And so I needed God to settle my mind down. Y'all don't really hear me. And maybe it's not just me. I still need God to settle my mind down every now and then because I may be not at work, but it don't mean that I'm resting. I, I need God because I need peace. Amen. And it's so interesting that peace is not what God does around you. Peace is what God does in you. So we ask God for peace and we say, we're going to expect tomorrow that person at my job is not going to bother me. We're going to expect tomorrow that me and my sister or my brother that we've been falling out for the last 30 years, that God's going to make it good, that my family is going to all be good now, that, that all the chaos in my life is going to stop. That's not the peace he's going to give you. He's going to give you the kind of peace that he had that when he was in the boat in the middle of the storm, that while everybody else is worried, at the bottom of the boat sleeping. He did not have to stop the storm to sleep. Y'all better hear me. I'm going to preach this thing. He didn't have to stop the storm to sleep because he had peace in him. It don't matter if there's peace out there. I got peace inside of me. He said, I'll give you that kind of peace. We come to him because we need transformation. I don't want to be the way that I am. I don't want to stay the person that I am. I need to be better. I need to grow. So I know I can't fix me. And you can't fix me. And nobody in this world can fix me. I need transformation from Jesus. But after receiving all of this, guess what? We still got to live. We still have to work. We still have to maintain sometimes. So we spend time in the presence of God. And, and we bask in the glory of God. But we cannot bask in the glory all day. That's being real. You ain't gonna be in the seventh heaven, the third heaven all day. That's not how it works. He'll just let you be speaking in tongues and, and just feeling the presence of God. He don't want you to do it all day. It's a reason now. And you say, well, Pastor, no, I can be in the, no, 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 we're all in God's presence, but you know what I'm talking about. In, in, in a spiritual euphoric feeling where you, you're you lifted up and God is showing you things and doing things. But doesn't he always bring you back down to earth? It is me. No, you know, all, you know, I, don't, I don't walk around like that all the time, you know. But, because he, 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 he does our way because we have to get back on our way. Yes, right. Amen. Oh, yeah, you went to the closet, but you got to get back on your way. Oh, you were in the third heaven, but you got to get back on your way. Because, see, you can't speak in tongues and save people. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Yeah, man, you know, that's my stopping people inside of here. No, 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 no. The Bible says, you know, when a man speaks in tongues, he edifies himself. He is the one who's being lifted up. He said, but it is better that you just speak one word that people can understand than speak a whole paragraph in tongues because that's only helping you. But see, when you got to come back down because if you have people on the way that need you and they are not yet in the third and seventh heaven and they need you to speak to them. So God says, yes, I know you're enjoying yourself, but you got to go back on your way. We got to go back home to fulfill our mission. And, 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 and when what you have received of God is not just for your benefit. You know, I don't like people who just say, I, I, my God is, is strengthening me. He's anointing me. He's empowering me. To do what? Come on now. That's to do right. what? That's right. Well, what is your mission? What are you trying to do? It shouldn't, it should not only just benefit you. If it was only for you, you would be the recipient of the glory and not the vessel of the glory. I am not the recipient of the glory. I am the vessel of the glory. Meaning God pours into me. Y'all better hear me. So I can then pour into other people. The vessel does not keep the glory. The vessel only transfers the glory. So if Mother Glory wants to bring me a uh, uh, cake, and it, I'm on I'm only cakes. I'm not eating too much cake. I don't know why it's coming out of me. It's coming out of me. That, 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 that will to eat all this cake. But, but if, if she wants to make me a cake, she just does not just give me the cake and just put it in my hand. What does she do? She puts it inside of a cake pan, a cake plate, and she puts a top on it, and that vessel now transfers yeah. the glory, the cake to me. And guess what happens now? I have to give that cake pan back to her, but it is the vessel so she can give the cake to somebody else. Can I preach to two or three y'all when I tell you this? That glory was not for you. That, that, that honor was not for you. God said you were only the vessel. Transfer what's in heaven to earth. That's why the Bible says, Let my will be done in earth as it already is in heaven. The, 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 the angels who are in heaven, they don't just get God's glory.
It's about me transferring. I'm being poured into to be poured out to others. People, when they tell me God is choosing me, God is doing great things, my next question to you is very simple. Who are you pouring into? Since God has been in all this time pouring into you, who are you pouring into? Because truthfully, I gotta get on my sermon, but truthfully, sometimes the pouring out will not always be public. And it's interesting. 
And you don't plan for that in your mind, do you? When you get a leadership role or any kind of role where you got to deal with people, you don't plan for the unknown unknowns. That's right. That's right. I didn't know you act like that. I didn't know you would say that to me. I didn't know you that lazy. Right. I'll be real. That, that, that's what happens. And you, it will run you out at times. But I told John, I said, you know what? That's what makes a professional. Professionals can be able to perform in bad conditions. Anybody can perform okay in uh, great conditions. But when you're able to perform in bad conditions, when you go to somebody's church, the mic don't work real good. And you ain't sitting there embarrassing the people talking about if, if we, we can't have them without this mic. Come on, Come on. Embarrassing the people inside there. Yeah. Knowing you ain't had mics in your church for a while too. Yeah. Am I being real in this house? Yeah. Just had mics in your church for a year now you want to be bougie inside of there. Come, yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. This is what we do. But, but when you're a professional at what you do, y'all better hear me. You can operate when the conditions are not so great. To see when everything works, that you're not stressed, that you're behaved well, that everything is going good. But I see what you are. Y'all better hear me. When this thing is the breakdown, when that person lets you down, when this person acts up, then I know what you really are. Whenever you're working for the king, hear me, you will be put on the enemy's radar and you're going to face real warfare. Hear me when I say this. Real warfare is not somebody hating on you that don't want to eat with you no more. Y'all gotta stop this. That's why folks think we weak. That's why we are weak. Cause God said you dealing with elementary things, and I can't move you up. They ain't gotta eat with you. They ain't gotta like you. I told my wife, I said, you know the weird thing about it, my favorite color is red. Some of my favorite color is blue. God did that. There's no rhyme or reason to that. We're not all the same. We're going to all get along. You cannot be bosom buddies with everybody. And sometimes relationships have an expiration date on it. Sometimes you cool with this person for now. It's for a season. We mess up and we try to keep people in our lives that were only meant to be there for a season. And now we both mad at each other. We got to blame that person. Well, the devil is out of you. Look what we're going to say. Well, the devil is out of you. And God is telling y'all, this was only meant to be there for a season. Amen. And it don't mean that neither one of y'all are wrong. Y'all hear me. But even if they don't like you for no reason, even if they just don't like you at all, that's not warfare. That's not warfare. We ain't in high school. It's not a popularity contest. We're not in high school, y'all. Y'all playing mean girls or something. I don't know what's going on. Warfare. Somebody said it's not warfare. Not warfare. You're wasting your prayers. That right. is not warfare right there. Jealousy from people is not warfare. Because you live in a certain house and you drive a certain car, everybody ain't gonna like that. Not if you sit up, don't care. That's right. Keep it real. People talk about it and say, you know, what do you think of me? Nah, I don't think about you at all. I tell people sometimes it's truthful, you know, I'm trying to get a degree. I got a, a family, I work two jobs. <laughs> I got kids and everything. I don't have enough time to worry about you. I got my bills. It's not warfare. But when you get real warfare, it is specifically designed to wear you out. Can I show you this? In Daniel 7 and 25 it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Talk to the enemy. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. I want you to put it on that. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. In Daniel 7 and 25, he's going to put it in a little bit. Daniel 7 and 25. And, 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 and to think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. He said he going to wear out the saints of God. That's the word. I, that, that's King James. They're not even the English Standard Version that you can use. That's King James. Yet we are commanded to somehow maintain. Y'all better hear me. When the enemy is doing his best to wear you out. He's doing his best to bring you down. But God says, I still need you to maintain and somehow be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That means I'm being worn out, but at the same time, I'm still working. I'm stressed. 
stressed out, but the work will still get done. My mind is troubled, but the work will still get done. My spirit is vexed. I'm preaching to two or three of y'all, but the work is going to get done. The devil is here. I know his assignment of the sin. His assignment was sent to wear me out. So therefore, since I know that, I do know that greater is he that is in me and he that is in the world. He was sent to wear me out, but guess what? The work will still get done. Despite the trials of life, despite the burden of ministry work and the assault of the enemy, that's why I said, Lord, the work will still get done. And this is where temptation to faint presents itself. So let me get to my text. And this is where it gets rough. Yeah. We need to understand that the temptation to faint is real. Yeah. Man. Stop telling me that you just sorry. Stop telling me that you ain't got no, no strength. No, 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 no. When you really go through some things in life, there's a temptation to give up. Yes, right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, yes, when I go through some things in my life, I can not speak for y'all. I have a temptation sometimes to give up. Amen. Uh -huh. Ain't always says about me giving up on God and going back to the world. Right, right. Sometimes we think that's it. No, to give up on what God told me to do. Yes, right. Amen. Come on. Because see, you didn't hear what God told me to do. That's right, Pastor. Because see, I can still be saved and be disobedient sometimes. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. That God told me, no, I need you to do this, but no, it got too hard, and, 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 and the devil, the Bible says, was sent to wear me out, and so, therefore, he succeeded, and I gave up on what God told me to do, and the problem is, Evangelist, is that, you know, uh, Evangelist Greta, the problem is, you don't know what God told me. So, I get to still be around the saints of God and act like I'm so anointed and just so obedient to God. And yet, at the same time, I'm not. Jesus was concerned that the people that came to him, to hear him, would faint on their journey back home. Because they had been with him for three days, they ran out of food and would have to make the journey back home without the necessary supplies for the trip. And so therefore he had compassion on them. You know why? He had compassion on them? Because he understood the pain and the danger of hunger. Yes. He understood. Y'all don't believe me? Matthew 4 and 2 says, and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Yeah. It's so interesting that they put that in there. It's a small scripture, but it humanizes Jesus in such a yeah. great way, doesn't it? Amen. That, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, but he, Jesus, he wouldn't eat, he didn't eat about him. The Bible says he was hungry. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says he wanted something to eat. And the enemy capitalized on his hunger and chose to tempt him where? At the end of the fast. Right. Because he thought that Jesus would be weak and close to fainting and would accept anything for food. He didn't tempt him at the beginning, but at the end of the fast. I'm going to let you get good in a while. I'm going to let you get good and hungry. Good and exhausted. And that's when I'm coming. Yes. I preach to me inside of here. Because maybe I'm the only one that I've worked hard and I've done the will of God and I've stressed myself out and, I, and I've gone and worked and strived. And at the end of that thing, that's when the enemy comes. Yes. See, there's a danger in fainting. The Hebrew view of fainting, when they said the word faint, it meant to be to fail, to give up, to stumble, to succumb. To, to waver or to stagger. It is when you are so overcome by what you are going through that you fail, that you stumble, that you give up, that you waver, that you stagger. It is when you don't have enough in you to keep going and to maintain. And if you, we were honest, we would admit that there were times that we would we question if there was really enough in us to maintain. There were times that we begin to say, well, Lord, I know that you won't put more on me than I can bear. We should read what the Bible says. But, but I know that you, you think I'm strong because you put all this on me. But, Lord, I, I wonder, do you see what I see? How about it get me? I, I wonder sometimes, are you seeing a person that I don't see in a mirror? Because all this stuff you're putting on me, I'm not that strong. I don't have enough inside of me to do what you want me to do. And people are looking at me, but I'm about to lose my mind. And then, and then people are looking at me, but I just want to give up because I know that you think that I'm so strong, but Lord, do you 
really see who I am. All right. And maybe you are seeing something that I don't see. And I don't know if I got enough in me to maintain. I still gotta be, you know, and y'all can understand this about people of God, and especially pastors and ministers and anybody that works in the house of the Lord. Not just pastors and ministers, because people do work in the house of the Lord who are not pastors and ministers. You know, I gotta go home and be a father. That's right. Mm -hmm. After all that I have to deal with in the house of the Lord, I gotta go home and be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and because I'm a, a preacher, <laughs> the devil ain't gonna leave my kids alone. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can I be real? But because I'm a pastor, he ain't gonna say, well, certain things your son ain't gonna do. Yeah. Certain things, I'm gonna, it will be off limit for your son. That, that there's so and so son out there in the world, he can do this and he can do that and he can get in this trouble and that trouble. I'm going to leave you alone. That's right. The devil is alive. Uh -huh. I still got to be a father. Uh -huh. I still got to be a husband. Y'all better hear me. I still got to be a husband when I go back home. I still got to go to work. You still got to be a husband. You still got to be a wife. You still got to be a father. You still got to be a, a, a brother, a sister, a mother. You must do all those things in spite of what you're going to going through. And am I right when I say that sometimes I say, Lord, know if I'm as strong as you think I am. Come on. I don't even really know if I am. Jesus understood that feeling. Yeah. Because the Bible says a man like me. The Bible says we don't have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our hurt. He knew what it was like to do the will of God. Oh, y'all better hear me. He preached. He healed. Oh, Elder Scott, man, he began to go out there and preach to people, raise the dead, heal people. But I love what I saw about the Bible, about, the, about Jesus in the Bible. That the Bible says that, that he did all these things. And I always wonder, did he ever get tired? I always wonder, did he ever lose any energy? But then there's a story about a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And 12 years, she had suffered at the hands of the physicians. And she was no better. So what happened was, she came Jesus with a 12 year illness that had not just afflicted her body but had begun to afflict her mind and had begun to afflict her spirit. She had such an emptiness, such a longing inside of her that when she got to Jesus he didn't have to lay hands on her. He didn't have to come out and speak and put his hand on her belly. No, she grabbed the hem of his garment and even though people were touching him, what she had in her that God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's what people don't understand. That when you serve people and you begin to do the will of God, there's something that will be poured out of you sometimes. There's sometimes, I can quiet y'all want to, but there's sometimes things will be being pulled out of you. Jesus said, I felt virtue come out of me. I felt power come out of me. I felt energy come out of me. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy because you forgot what I said about the cake plate. That the the power that God put in him was not for him to keep for himself, but it was for him to give to somebody else. And when the power is great, y'all better hear me, and when the need is great, when somebody pulls on you, you feel it. Can I speak to four or five of y'all that ever had to mention to somebody and you went home and felt like you had their problems on you? Have you ever prayed for somebody, interceded for them, and then you felt like the heaviness that they were going through somehow was transferred to you? This is why I tell people, watch when you call yourself an intercessor. Do you know what an intercessor is? They step in someone else's position, and they say, Lord, what they're going through, the hurt that they're going through, put it on me, because that's why you empowered me. That's why you gave me the glory. Me. The Bible says that the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Oh, but watch when you just want the title of the intercessor. But you feel like you're gonna pray for somebody and go right to sleep. The devil is alive. Sometimes he 
gonna pray for people and what they have been going through, the, the burden that they've been on their life, they get off the phone with you saying, oh, I feel so much better. Oh, I just feel good in my spirit. I feel great in my spirit. Like a burden was released off of me. And at the same time, you up to 12, 30, 1, 30, 2, 30 in the morning because what was on them, that burden, God said, I need you to care about them. I need you to bear that burden for them. Y'all let me know. He, was a, he knew what it was like to lose virtue. He understands that after you are delivered and anointed, the journey ahead of you can be so arduous that you will feel like fainting along the way. How many people were good when you were at the altar? Oh, at the altar, I feel great. God was ministering to me. He was giving me a word. He was doing great things. He showed me things. At the altar. How many people were good in your prayer closet? I got in my prayer closet. I closed the door and God began to minister. He began to fill me up. He began to empower me. How many people were good when you were listening to the sermon? That Lord, I heard the word of God. It began to encourage me. It began to empower me. It began to give me the strength to keep going. But somewhere along the way, something pulled on your virtue to a point that you almost fainted. The Lord on my way back home, somebody needed what you put in me. Somebody needed what you poured into me. And when I begin to pour out, it begin to hurt me in the process. Because ministry work can hurt sometimes. Doing the will of God can cost you something. Baby, this is not free. Salvation was free. But to live for God, you must begin to sacrifice. You must deny yourself. He says, I understand. Yeah. He says, be careful though. Yes. About what you do when you exhaust it. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, Pastor. Help be careful come about on, the decisions Pastor. you make when you're the exhausted. Genesis 25 and 29 talks about Jacob and Esau. And Jacob saw a cottage. And Esau came from the field. And he was faint. He was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint, I'm exhausted, I'm hungry, I'm about ready to give up. Therefore, his name was called Edom, which means red. Mm -hmm. Esau's hunger and exhaustion was used against him because his brother was named Jacob, which means supplanter, which means, which means somebody who takes somebody else's spot. I'm going to preach this thing. Somebody who begins to take somebody's spot who they don't belong to. And he said, give me this because I'm about to, about to expire. I'm exhausted. And the Bible said, because Jacob saw that my brother, when he gets tired, he gets stupid. Y'all better get me. My brother, when he gets tired, he becomes reckless. My brother, when he gets tired, he becomes desperate. And so therefore, I know if I offer him some soup, y'all better get me when I say this, he will sell his birthright. The enemy wants to use your exhaustion. He wants to your stress. He wants to use your desperation to try to get you to sell out in this season. That I know that you're going through. That's why I came to you. That's why I've been wearing you out. You thought I came to steal. You thought I just came to steal. I do more than steal. I wear people out and I trick them to give up on what God gave them because they are exhausted in this season. But what he is trying to sell you is not worth what God
Do not pledge Kappa Alpha Psi. Fraternity Incorporated. All my big brothers told me. They said tonight may be bad. You may go through some things in the night. But you just remember. No matter what they do to you. They can't stop the sun from coming up. Because when the sun comes up. They're going to leave you alone. I've had to learn sometimes. It may be bad right now. But the devil can't stop the sun from coming up. Because about 2,000 years ago. The S.O.N. went into a grave. And the devil said. I beat him all night long. I spit on his face. Put a Enough to keep you on the way. Yeah, right. yeah. He has 
enough to keep you on the way. After you leave the presence, the only thing that will keep you, hear me, I know how, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to talk to you. Only thing going to keep you is principles. Yeah. Come on, Pastor, come on. The principles that you learn will keep you. Come on. I'm going to preach this. Come on. Because sometimes we just come to God for the hype. Evaluation. No, no, no. You better have some principles. You cannot begin to shout 
when you go to the store and you have no money in your pocket, you need some provisions. You need some principles. Oh, you cannot just go to the bank and tell them, I need this loan, but you have not paid your bills. You don't have no credit. Baby, you need some principles. The Bible says, a wicked man borrow and do not repay. Oh, get mad at me if you want to. That's why you've been putting oil on cars and still driving what you've been driving. That's why you've been walking around houses and living where you've been living. Because you want to get what you want to get and ignore principles. The Bible says you better pay that man. You owe that man, you pay that man. A wicked man borrowed and do not repay. You better fix your credit. Y'all better hear me. I thank God. I don't need God to just bless me with the house. Lord, give me the wisdom to know which house to get. Which car to buy. Give me favor because I kept your principles. Cause they thought they could just shout over stuff and get it. Uh-huh. They just shout over stuff. Go lay hands on cars. It's my car. Oh, you better hear me. God says you better keep principles. You better make sure you are a giver. Lord, I, will, I want the people to give to me. The Bible says, press down, shaking together. Me shall give to your bosom. But it's because you are a giver first. On the way, when you don't feel a shout in your feet, yeah, come on now. Am I the only one who don't feel a shout in my feet all the time? Come on, man. All right. Every time I ain't feel a shout in my feet, Amen. just being real. But it, it, there are times when, when, when we, the principles gonna be your provisions. When you don't feel a stirring in your soul, yeah, Amen. Right. Amen. When I be honest, I don't feel nothing. Yeah, come on, Pastor. But I know God is still real. I'm in the hospital room and tell me, people tell me to pray for somebody. I don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the only one. Uh-huh. But I know the Bible said the affection of fervent prayer of a righteous man much. So I pray anyway. Amen. 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 It's the principles that keep me going. Yes, amen. Thank you. And that is more than enough. Yes, it is. Because he is giant. Yes. More than enough. And there is no need to faint on the way. 